Hello, everybody. Um, Cobra DVS and Derek's Game World here Hello. for the first episode of the um, Infrequent Jog podcast. Um, <laughs> the I, I guess what you want to say first uh, about the name? Um, it's yeah, we know it's it's kind of a dumb name, um, but there's there's a reason behind it. Um, and I think Hunter, we we kind of uh, decided not to give away the meaning behind the name. No, no, not a, yeah. We'll wait till someone figures it out. Yeah, there is something there. Um, <laughs> I don't know if anybody will figure it out or not. But yeah, me either. anyway, if you think you know, um, post a comment. Maybe we'll do a contest. Maybe we'll do a contest. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, just quickly to to sum it up. Uh, what the show is going to be about. Um, you know, years ago, I did a podcast with a, a good YouTube buddy, and um, we did a handful of episodes, and it, um, you know, kind of run its course, and we ended up, um, he got busy uh, with life as it happens, and uh, it ended, and then eventually I stopped doing YouTube, and so on and so forth. Um, but when Hunter and I did that video last week, um, the idea kind of came about of, well, what if we did this sort of um, on a more frequent basis? And I thought, well, why don't we just make it, you know, um, a podcast type of thing. Um, make it a little more streamlined, easier, a little more order to it, um, and, um, and and go from there. And so it were, and uh, we came up with this. Um, I mean, we're going to try and keep it about one hour long. There's going to be a, a, or so, I mean, I, we'll see how uh, how long it actually I, goes. I, yeah, it depends on how long it takes to get through the yeah. subjects. Yeah really have no idea it could be three hours or it could be half. <laughs> i don't know yeah um so we'll go through and here's going to be the structure of the show it's going to be a couple of different segments and um uh we'll try and maintain this throughout the uh the course of the uh episodes so the first thing we're gonna do is talk about some news articles and things that have come up um a couple from the both of us um, after that, we're going to do uh, two spotlights, two gaming spotlights. So the first one will be a modern game, and the second one will be, or actually the first one will be a retro game, and the second one will be a modern game. Um, Hunter this week has the uh, retro game spotlight, and then I've got the modern one, um, and then we'll alternate every week. After that is, uh, boy, can I remember this? Yeah, okay, so games we are playing right now. Yep. And then after that will be games we're looking forward to playing. And then we will wrap it up with uh, just a little random piece of trivia about some game. And Hunter has that this week. And um, that will be the end of the show. Um, one thing about the games we're looking forward to. So that can be, I guess, anything. Um, yeah, yeah. Not, oh, yeah, yeah. But I think the idea would be, uh, what I thought would be kind of interesting, is to keep it to games that are coming out this year, uh, or at least in the short term. Uh, and that way, when the game does come out, we can do a little corp about it. So, let's say I'm looking forward to, uh, Hunter, you'd mentioned Pokemon Shield. or whatever. Right, right. Um, so, imagine we were doing the podcast back last year, Pokemon Shield comes out, well, we can take it off the list. But I think it would be cool to talk about that game in the episode just after the game comes out. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. So we'll do that um, as it happens and as games on our list fall off because they've come out um, and kind of... Well, I guess they would just kind of naturally fall into the games we're playing discussion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, anyway, why don't we uh, get started? The uh, I guess one more thing. I think the idea right now, we're going to see how it goes, is every two weeks do an episode. Um, we'll see how that pattern goes, um, and adjust it accordingly. And then the upload day, um, is not yet determined. <laughs> Man, we're waiting on a few factors. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I think one thing I'd like to do is keep it routinely that day. So let's say it's Wednesday. It would be this Wednesday and then two weeks from now, another episode, two weeks, you know, keep yeah, it this yeah. day. Yep. Uh, all right. I think that's everything. I probably missed some stuff, but yeah, that's the gist. Yeah, that's that's it. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. A couple of news things. So I'll lead it off, uh, yeah, go ahead. Hunter. So we saw uh, my girlfriend and I, I should say, saw the Sonic movie this weekend, 
And uh, I, I'm not going to do a review on it or anything like that, but I will tell you this. I actually liked it quite a bit. You know, I heard that from a few friends that it was actually pretty good. I mean, I don't... I My expectations were kind of temper tempered a little bit. I didn't really have high expectations. I, I had none. I had yeah. none. And we went in. I would say the movie was about an hour and a half. It was enjoyable from start to finish. There was a lot of Sega or Sonic um, references, like the city that the game or the movie takes place in is called Green Hills. Oh, really? That's cool. Uh, yeah. Like um, Jim Carrey's Dr. Robotnik. Yeah, who, um, plays, who plays Sonic? You know, I forgot the guy's name. I forgot his name. I, I did look him up when it happened, and um, or after we had seen it, and I don't know. Um, I can't remember his name, but I can look it up. And I didn't recognize him from anything else, so I'm not sure that you will um, recognize him or not. But let's see. His name is Ben Schwartz. Oh, it's Ben Schwartz. Yes, I know. I know Ben Schwartz. He's uh he's in uh, Parks and Recreation. Yes, his name's. John Ruff John John John, uh, John Raffio. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking at his IMDb now. Yeah, that's cool. I didn't. I didn't know he was the voice. Yep. Uh, um, it, it, I. You know, I do find interesting that that movie had a total redesign. Yeah. So I saw the trailer when it came out, and I thought, yeah, he did kind of look weird. He did. Um, I thought he did. I, I, I'm not the biggest Sonic fan in the world, so it didn't like oh, me either. inherently bother me. But I do. I am glad that they listened and they changed it because now a lot more people went and saw it. I think because they respected that decision to change it. Finally, a studio that listens. Yeah, and um, actually, I, I guess we should start or talk about the actual news article. Was that uh, the the movie over the weekend is going to uh, suppo supposed to hit or targeted to hit about sixty five million dollars. Um, which I believe I'd have to look at the article again, but I think is the biggest video game movie opening of all time. What really? Yeah, and I so it's, now, so, so it's breaking it, records. Yeah, if you think about it, though, I mean, there's not really a ton of high-profile video game movies. P Pixel, maybe. Adam Sandler. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, that's not even. But that's not even based off anything, right? Well, no, I don't. I don't think so. Okay, so this is saying that it estimates um, about $65 million in its opening weekend. Um, it would be the new record. Yeah, so it would beat Detective wow. Pikachu. Oh, I forgot about that. That was pretty yeah, big, which, too. Which was actually pretty good, yeah. That was, a, that was I heard a, that was good, too, though. Yeah, it was good. It I was didn't good. see. I haven't seen that yet, either. Really funny. Um, but, yeah, this movie was, uh, I mean... I thought Sonic, I mean, he was obviously CG, but he looked good. You couldn't tell that it was like a rush job to fix him or that's, anything like that. That's good. That's um, good. Jim Carrey was uh, was good. Um, I was going to say, how was his performance as Robotnik? I mean, yeah, I mean, how do you, what do you base him off of? Because in the games, he doesn't really do anything. The, the cartoon? Yeah, I guess. That's true. I saw him in the cartoons. He's kind of um, like a, a super egotistical genius who's mean but goofy like at the same time. I mean time. it's Jim it's Jim Carrey. Right. Yeah, I haven't seen Jim Carrey in anything in a long time. Me either, but you um, know, he's going to be doing some sort of shtick. Yeah, and uh he did it well. I don't I don't I don't know what kind of uh character Robotnik is necessarily supposed to be, but he did um he did play him well. And it's funny that they did call him Robotnik instead of Eggman. It it is, isn't it? Yeah. But um, when you watch the movie, um, there's kind of a reason or a, um, I don't want to spoil anything, but it is mentioned. The both, oh, oh the, is it? The name, thing, the name thing is mentioned in the movie. Okay. So, um, so it was pretty good. I, I definitely recommend it. I mean, if you're, it doesn't matter if you're really a Sonic fan or just a video game fan or. I mean, I, I would definitely movie. watch it. Yeah, it's, it's definitely worth, uh, worth the price of admission, I would say. So, and it's great that it's doing well. I don't think the reviews were crazy good, but the fan reception or the, you know, the oh, people, I'm sure, I'm sure the critics are gonna give it a terrible, yeah. a terrible review. But as far as the audience goes, it's been pretty well received. Oh, that's good to hear, though. It's nice to hear that it's doing well and not one of the worst movies ever. Yeah, which is it is good to see. So, what do you got? Well, 
we might as well talk about coronavirus. You know, it's it's affecting distribution. Hunter, it's, it's called COVID nineteen. COVID nineteen. Oh, you didn't hear about this? No. Coronavirus is just a grouping of type of. It's like calling something the flu. Um, oh, really? Right. So, but there are specific, um, like strains segments or strains. Yeah, whatever you want to call them of coronavirus and so not to confuse it with coronavirus as a whole um i don't know if it's the world health organization or the cdc or whoever um came up with the name covid19 which okay. is an abbreviated name for coronavirus i don't know what the d stands for um but uh and then hyphen 19 because i think in 2019 is when it happened okay okay interesting didn't know that yeah it's weird all right well covid19 whatever uh, you know, you're seeing all these articles in China, all these plants can't function because, you know, everyone's evacuated and whatever. And I've definitely been seeing the articles go around that the uh, some some uh, video game companies are going to be having distribution problems. Uh, I saw one for, uh, I think it was, it was either Signature Edition Games or like Strictly Limited, something like that. Okay. They were doing uh, some limited edition of a game and it was supposed to come with a steelbook. And they said that they weren't shipping the steel book with the collector's edition, which people were upset about. But they said it's because of that. And people are upset. And I mean, but it's like, I, I mean, I understand people are upset, but what do they want them to do? You know what I mean? The, yeah, there, there is nothing that if they're upset about the game, like if they're upset about not getting the steel book, I guess that's one thing. But if they're upset with the company, Right. Then that's a totally different ball game, right? Because it's not the company's fault. Um, if you talk to, so I'm in the, uh, I'm in, I'm from Michigan, so the auto industry is the biggest thing. There, I mean, there is, I mean, there are certain things you can do to fix this problem, but in the short run, there's very, very little that you can do. Um, and something like a video game steelbook being delayed. Compared to right, you know, not being able to build Ford F one fifties, it's a big difference. Yeah, and it's not strictly limited or whoever; it's not their fault. In everything, I don't care who you talk to, pretty much every industry in the world is affected by China, whether right, they get yes. stuff from China or not. And I mean, it sucks, and hopefully, it gets better because it's impacting a lot of a lot of things. Um, but I would say if anybody's upset, especially at the company, about the game or whatever being delayed, uh, that's just idiotic. Uh, it's, it's idiotic is what it is. But I, I've seen I've seen people – they're already speculating PS5 is going to either be delayed or is going to ship in limited quantities. Which, I mean, that is a huge deal. Which, that is a lot of money. Like, And if that did happen, that would be a disaster. Yeah. I mean, a, I mean that, a straight up disaster. That they are, uh, that is a big deal. And I mean, and, there's. And I don't think people understand that how big of a deal it is. Yeah, a steelbook is one thing, but there are components um, on the electronic side that you simply cannot get anywhere else. They're right. only manufactured in China because they make hundreds of millions and billions of these things um, daily. And, you know, China's got the the market on it it's where the it's where it's cheapest to make them right i mean if they're not producing well, you can't get it anywhere else and if yep. you can it's going to be 10 times as expensive All right so yeah, they're not, I mean, they're not going to go that route either yeah I, I wonder if the um because when the when they imposed tariffs on the chinese goods like mm. um in late 2018 and then again they upped it in 2019 a lot of companies looked at um resourcing stuff from china to like vietnam or thailand or taiwan yeah yeah i, I um, saw that i wonder if uh if they did that I, I, because I, it would just be interesting to see companies that did that for the reason of tariffs are now like wiping the sweat off their foreheads because they don't have to worry about right right covid19 or whatever yeah, you do wonder don't you yeah i mean i remember there was a story about nintendo um switching production i from China to it, it was one of those. It, it was an Asian I, country. Or, I think I think I remember this this article. Yeah, and it may have been Taiwan. I think it was Taiwan. Taiwan, I, I, I think it was. 
they're a pretty big producer of electronics and, and stuff like that. So yeah, um, I remember that. I mean, it's interesting. It's a scary situation. Um, hopefully, it gets better. There was a I saw a video uh, today of a people in hazmat suits in China spraying what looked like fumigation in like an office building of Good. people just, like working, and they were just there with those breathing masks on, what? just. Uh, going about their daily business that's that's in very interesting it's wild it it's is wild. that yeah. is wild but yeah let's hope that doesn't go on too much longer All right so we'll see um yours was much more serious than mine <laughs> well i don't know i figured it, it needed to be quipped on yeah yeah no it's uh it's it, it, it is very big and it is very it'll be very interesting to see how it affects a lot of things not just in the video game world no, I mean, I always say the video game world is one of the few that it, it's not even in the it, top. It can survive. Yeah, I mean, they'll be okay. But whatever, like but, you said, car manufacturers, what happens when you can't build cars? I mean, it's hundreds of millions of dollars a day. What happens when you can't, uh, you know, ship stuff? Right. Apple. Apple, I mean, yeah. God, I mean, look at Apple. Their whole <laughs> base is in China. Yeah. So, uh, we'll see what happens. Maybe by the next podcast, I'll have uh, the world cleaned. Yeah, yeah, maybe. All right. Um, so yeah, my moving on. Circle, what's that? Moving on to yours. Yeah, my second one's not really news per se. It's more or less a rumor that came out a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, let's hear uh, it. Yeah, it was about um, apparently this year there's going to be a new Paper Mario and a new 2D Metroid for Switch. I heard the Paper Mario. I didn't hear the Metroid. Yeah, and what makes the Paper Mario s unique or significant, I guess, is that it's supposed to be a return to form. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. And that's just a loose, you know, return to form. That could mean a lot of stuff. Right, but what is return to form? Yeah, I, I think to me, really all it means is moving away from the Sticker Star Color Splash and more towards Thousand Year Door and Paper Mario. Now, now I gotta say, I'm not a veteran of Paper Mario. Not Same. You know, in fact, the only one I've ever played is Sticker Star. I finished about 90% of Sticker Star, and I beat Color Splash. Did you? Did you? All right, so you can talk about Color Splash here in a second. Yeah. Um, I like Sticker Star, but from, you know, and I ha I've i seen the 64 one, and I actually, I played a little bit of Thousand Year Door. They're not comparable. Same. They're not comparable. I mean, <laughs> Thousand Year Door is like a straight-up RPG. Sticker Star really doesn't have any RPG elements to be honest. And yeah. I know that's what the fans, they want. So hopefully return the form means that I don't know how color splash was. Um, actually it's, it's the only one I've finished and I haven't played like any of the 64 one. And I've only played a little bit of thousand year door. Yeah, yeah, um, but, uh, color splash is, it was fun. It was a good game. I mean, I played it all the way through and I it maybe ran on a little bit long. I think, the thing that people don't like about it, um, or that tends to get a lot of the hate or complaint, is the battle system where you're using cards. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Turn-based kind of move selections. Um, and I think it, it worked. It was fun. But it was, um, first of all, cards were just everywhere. Um, oh, yeah. And so was it, like, really easy? I don't know if I'd call it really easy but it wasn't that difficult no okay. i didn't have any troubles um it also didn't necessarily feel like it took a ton of strategy um, but there was some so like let's say example like one of the cards for mario is he can jump on an enemy well if you're going against a spiny who has spikes on his shell you don't want to use the jump because it'll end up hurting you so you use the hammer instead right right i mean i would say that's about the but a koopa for example you would want to use jump because they're known because you know you jump on them and shoot their right, shot yeah yeah so i mean just about that level of strategy is about all that was necessary i mean i, I do want to play it i don't have it i yeah. would like to get it and you can change the control scheme when you're actually issuing the cards in the battle it's a little bit because you have to pick a card you have to add color to it and adding color to it determines kind of how powerful the card is i believe i think I'm okay right um so the more color the more powerful and then you have a paint supply that can run out uh, although it never does um and then you play the card and it, you can there's two different control schemes and i can't remember you can do it all with buttons but then there's one where you actually on the gamepad have to 
touch the card and sort of fling your finger up towards the uh, to the top of the gamepad to kind of like like you're, throwing, like you're throwing the card at the at the screen. Interesting. Yeah. So it'll. I mean, it'd be nice to see Paper Mario on the Switch. Yeah. I definitely. Yeah, I, think so too. I mean, I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure it's coming. I know it's a rumor, but I'm sure it's coming. Yeah, I'm sure it will too. And, and here's what makes me think that a return to form is possible. Because they did it with Super Mario, the 3D Super Mario games with Odyssey. Return oh, to the oh god, Latin. Odyssey, <laughs> um, Zelda. They ever. really, they they really took Zelda. In, I mean, it's mostly a new direction, but it's away from like the Skyward Sword hand holding type gameplay that people right were right Luigi's Mansion. Luigi's Mansion was another one that really returned to the core. Yeah, um, yeah, I heard that. Yep, yeah, and um, so I, I believe that they probably would do it. Um, or return to form because uh, it seems to be the general direction that they're heading. It's also what all the fans want. It is, yeah. I mean, yes. they've been demanding a game like Thousand Year Door since Thousand Year Door. <laughs> That's true. Which I, to be honest with you, I thought we'd see a remake before we saw a. Uh, I, I did too. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know, but that's good. It's a game I probably would pick up and, and and give a shot. I think because it's in a paper world, there's so many different types of unique things you can do i think i know i think the concept is ph phenomenal and if you played color splash it looks just gorgeous in hd oh i bet it look yeah i bet it looks great yeah so it's a i i'll i'll, I'll be on the lookout for it hopefully it's hopefully it's real um the metroid thing though you said you hadn't heard yeah i hadn't heard that one it's uh the rumor is it's the fifth metroid game obviously the the order being metroid metroid 2 Super Metroid is Metroid 3, Metroid okay. Fusion is Metroid 4, and then this yeah. would be the fifth one, not counting Prime, obviously. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, okay, so in the, that style, this is Yes. Um, I don't know how deep the rumor goes, but if you ever played, it, it doesn't sound like you did, but if you played Samus Returns on 3DS. No, I didn't, but I heard that was pretty good. Yeah, the Metroid 2 remake, it was done by Mercury Steam, and they're actually the company that made um, the Castlevania... Um, Oh God! Why am I blanking on the name? The the new Castlevania games. The they had two of them on Xbox, or they, had, yeah, two on 360, and then uh, Lords of Shadow. Oh, Lords uh, of Shadow. Yeah, Castlevania Lords of Shadow, which the first one is one of my favorite games. Yeah, the first iteration. the first one's pretty good. Loved it. The second one, I only played a little bit. Uh, I heard it wasn't as good, and I did beat Lords of Shadow on 3DS. Um, what was the sub? Mirror of Fate, I think, was the subtitle. Uh, you mentioned just real quick. You mentioned the, that Samus Returns. That was a Metroid Two remake. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's a remake of Metroid Two. I guess. Okay, interesting. I didn't. I did not know that. Yeah, it doesn't. I, I never played that one. Um, and it doesn't really feel like a. It feels new. It feels like a new game just because it? they added to it. And yeah, it was very good. Last 3DS game I ever played beat. Um, and I have no intentions of going back to the 3DS ever again because my, <laughs> my my hand was cramped so bad after the final boss fight. I just have no desire to play that thing anymore. All right, so we won't we won't we won't have any 3DS games on your playing now list. No, probably not. Unless <laughs> I honestly I can't think of a situation where that <laughs> would happen. Yeah, unless they remade a Link to the Past for it, which I don't think they would do. So no, I I don't think I mean. So anyway, I guess if those rumors are true, you could add them both, especially Metroid, to my games I'm looking forward to last book. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nothing yet. I mean, hell, we still don't have Metroid Prime 4 either. Yeah, and that's the real bummer. And I thought that Metroid Prime Trilogy, the, the heavily rumored Metroid Prime Oh, Trilogy, I know. I thought for sure that was coming. Yeah, I mean, the... Um, the, the, I thought as soon as they delayed Metroid Prime 4, Metroid Prime Trilogy's announcement would officially happen to kind of bridge the gap. It'd be right. like, okay, Metroid Prime 4 is about three years away, but in six months you're going to have the trilogy in HD. Like just to give the fans something. Yeah. Uh, I think they would have probably played that card by now, so maybe that game is not in development. I yeah, don't know. Yeah, I, I definitely thought it would have happened by now, because, I mean, how many times has Metroid Prime 4 been brought up and delayed? I mean... I mean, what's the most we know about it? The title? The logo? Um, yeah, just the title, unless it has a subtitle, like um, 3 did. Actually, 2 and 3 both had subtitles. Right, cool. right. And we know that it's being developed by Retro Studios. That's it. Right. I mean... Speaking of Retro Studios, I, I mean, we don't want to get too far off topic here, but 
they've apparently been developing some game since Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, and nobody knows what it is. Really? And didn't, so didn't see that, that article. And, well, and now who knows? Who? When are we going to know? Because now they're doing Metroid Prime Four. Right. Like, how long is that going to be? It was rumored um, that it was a. Um, I, I don't. I, I think this is. I'm remembering this correctly. It was a um, F Zero Star Fox like mashup racing oh, game. Well, that's right up my alley. Yeah, which would have been kind of cool. And I think they were expecting that to be announced. I don't know if it was the most the like 2019's E3 or 18 or whatever. And it never happened. So I don't know. Well, um, maybe in five years when Metroid Prime Four is done. Right. Exactly. We'll get, we'll get an announcement there. Put it on the Super Switch or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, one game I wish, or one game I hope will eventually happen, or, and that would be cool if they were working on it, is, first of all, Tropical Freeze, Donkey Kong Country. Um, one of my favorite games ever. It was so good. I, I bought it twice. Um, you know, I liked it, but it was way too, it was it was too hard. It was too I, damn hard. You know what? I, I really, it was hard, but I really liked it, and I, I prefer it that way. And then you have, on the opposite end of the spectrum, a game like Yoshi's Crafted World, which is... I want that. It's almost so boring. It beca- it's so easy that it's boring, and I just don't really don't like it. have any drive to play it. No, maybe we can work out a deal and you'll yeah. wind up with it. Yeah, I, I mean, I would like to have it. Yeah, it's a fun... Uh, it was fun, um, but it, no game has captured like the Yoshi's Island feel for me yet from Super Mario. Really? Mario. Really? Fun. Yeah. Um, but hey, whatever. Um, okay. Enough for that one. You've got one more article. Yeah, so let, let's. I mean, let's talk about the Google Stadia for a second because no one does, and I mean for good reason. Nothing, much like the Wii U, no news that ever comes about uh, out about the Stadia is ever good. This thing has not had a good life. So it came out last November. I think it missed its, like some people. I think didn't get it on release day and it, like missed its launch window by a couple weeks or something happened. So no one got them on time, and then when they did get them, I mean, so the whole console's premise is streaming, right? You know, but if your internet isn't that good, like mine isn't, the games look like crap, and they run like crap. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just don't think, I think the problem is, I just don't think the technology is there yet for a full-on streaming console. Good idea in theory, I just don't think it's there yet. But uh, I saw a news article I think it was from a couple days ago. Uh, they they announced a couple new games are coming to the Stadia, and two that really shocked me, because uh, I can't imagine a developer going out of their way to put a game on this. Mm-hmm. Just I just don't see how it'd be worth it. But um, the Serious Sam collection <laughs> and the new Panzer Dragoon game, oh, is actually coming to the Stadia. Which I'm extremely excited for that game, by the way. Well, I thought that was a Switch exclusive. I don't know why I thought that. Maybe because it was announced in a Nintendo Direct or something. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. For some, I, I thought it was too, but it, they said it's coming to Stadia. Hmm, that's but, interesting. But yeah, I mean, I just I don't think the Stadia has a long lifespan. To be perfectly honest, I mean, it's only been out like three months, and honestly, I'd imagine by the end of the year, it's it's not going to be doing too well. Hmm. You know, I I guess you can call this um, ignorance on my part, but I didn't even know you could buy that thing. I, I didn't know it was out. I didn't know where to... I, and I, thus is the problem. Yeah. No one. I didn't know anything about it, really, other than Doom Eternal was coming to it. That's all I knew. Uh, from what I've heard, also, Google has not said, like, anything. Like, no updates, no, uh, like, plans. Uh, so, I, I, I don't see it. Yeah. I guess for me, I'm just so uninterested. Yeah, in I mean, something it, like this. It, it's I'm not the demographic, obviously. Yeah, because this to me is useless. <laughs> right. I, yeah. I will never buy a full-on streaming platform. Right. So, I mean, I guess the closest thing to this that I would be okay with is um, the Xbox Game Pass. Right, but even Which, then, you still have a physical media, though. Right. Of, mo- of most well, of those you, games, you, you can get you, them. Yeah I, yeah, I know what you mean. It's not streamed, right? You download it. Yeah, you're right. And for most of them, you can get physical versions. This, yeah, you can't. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I would say probably by the end of the year, they're going to be like, all right, we're pulling out of this. 
<laughs> and, um, you know, yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be a big f you to everybody that bought one. Yeah, I mean, I like a lot of Google stuff. Um, I have a Google phone myself. Same, I mean, same. I, I just I don't. Uh, I don't this, think they need to be involved in video games. Yeah, this at least not in this fashion. This one's this one's not for me. No, I mean this is like if it's like when Apple tried to do something when they tried to have the Pippin. It doesn't work. <laughs> no, yeah. When's the last time anybody brought that up? Yeah, nobody. But yeah, I mean it's just you, they don't need to be in this market. Didn't the uh, Ooya? Is that how you say it? Yeah, the Ooya. Isn't that kind of what that was trying to be? Uh, yeah. I, I don't know Android, exactly. The, I don't know exactly the difference. I never had a new yaw either. Same. Um, I know that that thing got discontinued pretty damn quick. I know what? it's an. I know it's an Android based console. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Yeah, I don't know what kind of games it could play though. Was it just Android Google Play Store games, or was it? I mean, considering it's running on Android, that's what I would imagine all the games would have to be, right? Um. Well, I don't know if that's true or not because it's just an op- Android's just an operating system, so. I mean, I guess anything that, I mean, you've got Grand Theft Auto on your phone now, so I guess. Well, any, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure, but I think the Ouya was, I don't think the Ouya was trying to be a streaming thing, though. I think that was more like apps. Gotcha. But, yeah, that thing also, failure. Yeah. Big, big failure there. Right. I, I remember, uh, I just I just Googled it here. It had one of the biggest, maybe even the biggest Kickstarter. Oh, I know. It was like $10 million, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, eight. Eight. $8.6 million. Yeah, I was going to say, I remember the Kickstarter was like one of the best of all time. It's a shame that it didn't turn out so good. Yeah, I guess I'd have to read more about what this thing actually is, but it does appear to be um, a new game console for TV, powered by Android. Yep, okay. I know it was cheap when it came out. I think it was under $100. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Or right around $100. Yeah. Huh. But, yeah, it, it it didn't make it. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's so hard to get into this. I mean... That's the problem. How can you how can you compete with Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft? Well, I mean, let's say it. And television's going to do it. <laughs> we got the Amico coming out later this year. They're gonna give. They're gonna throw their hat in the ring. I think Amico is in a different, definitely in a different category. Though. Well, yeah. Well, they're not trying to compete with Microsoft, right? Because um, they know that they can't. Yeah, and it's I in think, television. Yeah, like no offense, it, but it's in television. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that uh, I would say that console. I, we'll have to see what kind of games are on it, but I, th- I would say that it at least has a chance of being a an underground success. Well, you know, I will say I've, I've seen some of the trailers of the games and I've read about it. I gotta say, some of the games do look good. They do look pretty good. Um, the price point seems okay. You know, how much is it? Two, I think they're shooting. I think they're shooting for two hundred. So that's not bad compared. You know, an Xbox One X is five hundred dollars. But like you said, it's a completely different demographic. But I'm not writing it off. I used to write it off, but it's garnered my interest a little bit, so we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. We'll I touch think, more on that in the coming months. Yeah. Well, I think the one thing that that, thing, uh, that console has going for it is uh, the Earthworm Jim sequel. Which is funny, because I, I don't give a shit about Earthworm Jim. I don't like it either, but... I, it means nothing to me, but my buddy loves it, so... Why? Well, I, I, it just seems strange to me, because I don't know what in television has to do at all with Earthworm Jim. I know what Tommy oh, Tallarico has to do with Earthworm Jim, but I don't know. Maybe television. he just wanted it for the platform. Yeah, maybe that's it. I don't know. Maybe he just wanted it for the platform, which, I mean, it, that's cool if you're into Earthworm Jim. Yeah, you're going to have to buy a $200 console for it, but, you know. Right, I don't know if everybody's going to do that. Yeah. But, so, I don't yeah. know. I guess we'll just have to see what, what kind of games it has on yeah. it. I, I'm, not, I'm not rushing to buy one. No, but I'm it, not. I'm not saying I'm getting one day one. As of right now, I'm not planning on it. <laughs> but if something comes out that I'm like, you know what? Okay, that's pretty cool. Then I'd look into it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not writing it off. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not writing it off. Yeah, same. Uh, what 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 was the basis of your of your that whole thing was the Stadia. Google Stadia and yeah, Stadia. Oh, the article was the games that got announced that we that we quipped on. Oh, um. The Panzer Dragoon and Serious yeah. Sam. Yeah, Serious Sam, that's an odd one. I mean yeah, that I thought the, that one was odd too, yeah. That that 
um, what's the name of the Crow team? I think is who makes those games. Uh, they're a Croatian developer, and I, th- actually, the Serious Sam games are pretty good. Two on I played the GameCube one, and I played the one on Xbox Serious Sam Two. Never did play the first Serious Sam, but they're actually pretty fun games. Um, seems like they get put on a lot of stuff. So maybe I shouldn't uh, be that. Reading, reading this article, I, I still had it pulled up. Uh, apparently, Google promised that 120 games would hit the Stadia in 2020. But okay. apparently, releases are not coming out. <laughs> and <laughs> apparently, all the games that are on it are not very good. Well, we'll so. see. A- again, I've got no interest in it. I mean... No, me either. I won't buy one. So. The fact that Doom Eternal is on it is cool, but... It, uh, is it the Doom Eternal make it? Yeah, they announced it at, when they announced the Stadia. They announced that that was coming, but I, I again, I have zero. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna buy yeah. one. Yep. All right. Yeah. I, I guess we'll move on here. Yeah. What's next? Okay. Retro, retro spotlight. spotlight. Yeah. So two gaming spotlights. It's gonna be first is retro. Uh, Hunter, you got it this week, and then modern will be me. Um, Hunter, you said you had a you had one picked out. What do you I got? I do. So retro spotlight for me this week. I'm gonna go with one of my. F- Probably, probably my favorite game that I have discovered since I started collecting that I didn't know about when I was younger. So I picked Guardian Heroes on the Sega Saturn. Love mm-hmm. the Sega Saturn. It's got a lot of great games. This has to be my favorite, though. At least of all the ones that I've played. Die Hard Arcade, pretty close, though. Really? Okay. That, that's, a, that's a damn good game, too. Uh, so it's kind of like Final Fight. You know, I'm sure you've played Final Fight. Yeah. Uh, it's a side scroll and beat em up, but it's also an RPG. So you get experience and you level up, and you know it's just it's story based. I mean the story kind of blows, but uh, it's developed by Treasure, so you know. I was going to say, isn't this a Treasure game? I wanted it, to say I... it, it is, so you know it's going to be good. Yeah, but uh, it's got is like it branching think, paths. Is it better than McDonald's Treasure Island or whatever? It, it, it's better than that, but that's a good, that's a great game too. If you like platformers, <laughs> I've I've never played it. It's actually a very a very good game. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's got like branching paths, multiple endings. You have uh, you have like a karma meter, so if you kill like civilians and stuff, and uh, the soundtrack was actually done by some. No one's going to know who this is, but it's Hideki Matsutaki. I probably said that completely wrong. Uh, he was in a uh, a band called Yellow Magic Orchestra in the seventies, which. Are one of my favorite bands. Really? Uh, um, yeah. So, so that game is available on uh, the 360, I believe. I think you can still buy it if you want to play it. And they actually redid, like, they redid the whole game, so you can either play it as originally intended or in HD remake. So, pretty cool. Now that was a Saturn exclusive, right? Yes, it is That's a Saturn right. exclusive. Other than you know Xbox Live Arcade, and unfortunately, it's on the Saturn, so it's expensive. Yeah. Well, you know, I had that game at one point. I did too, um, and it's probably one of the ones one of the ones I most regret selling. It was a brief period of time, um, but if I'm remembering right, wasn't it, I know it was a beat 'em up, and I, I I remembered thinking it was a good game, but maybe not for me. I'm not huge on beat 'em ups. Right, but right. Isn't this the one where you kind of are on three different linear planes and you can yeah, jump between the yes, three? Yes, yes. I, I meant to touch on that. Yeah. So you have three planes, like the foreground, the background, and the mid mid plane. Yeah. Uh. Kind of, almost kind of like Wario Land for Game Boy, uh, or uh, Virtual Boy. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So combat you, is on three different planes, so it it has some strategy to it too. I just wanted to bring up the the fact that you brought up the Virtual Boy and the Pippin both on this episode, so. <laughs> and the Stadia. Yeah. So you know okay. we're we're three for three. Um. Yeah, and you know I I I think the. Japanese version on the Saturn is cheap. Yes. I, remember right. I think you can get it for under twenty dollars. And would you need? Is there a lot of reading involved? If it's uh, hard? you you. I think you could work. Like, there's like a level up system and stats, but I think you could muster your way through. Okay. And I'm sure someone online has a translation. All right. So, somewhere that you could look up. It would be interesting. But I mean, every treasure game is is it's gold. Yeah. It's gold. Every game is fantastic. Did you uh, did you play this spiritual successor on 3DS or Switch? Uh, yeah, Crown of Princess, right? Code of Princess. Code of Princess. Sorry, yeah, I have the I have it on Switch and I had the 3DS one. Yeah, uh, really good. I would say it's pretty faithful. Uh, you can definitely tell that it's like 
that's what it's based on. I mean, I think even the back of the box said you're the guardian hero, something or other. Like, yeah, it like pulls the word guardian. Yeah, hero. it's totally you know a seek a sequel, pseudo sequel. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, it also has a sequel in the Game Boy Advance called Advanced Guardian Heroes, but it's not as good. So it's, it's, it's a sequel it's, and not like a remake or a re. No, it I, it is an actual sequel. Huh. But yeah. uh, it is made. It's made by Treasure, and it's pretty good. Uh, I think they, uh, I think they did a Gunstar Hero sequel in the Game Boy Advance too. Yes, not, you're right. I uh, don't know if Treasure did it, but I know there is one on there. Yeah, I believe Treasure did that one too. And again, I don't think it's supposed to be as good as the Genesis one, but uh, I think it's supposed to be pretty good. So, I think that game's the only Treasure game I have. Is it Guardian Heroes? Yeah, or not uh, Gunstar Heroes? Do you have? I don't, uh, I don't you have, have Mischief Super Makers. Cool. Mischief Makers, no. Isn't mm -hmm. Ikaruga a treasure game? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have that either. I want that. Yeah. I think it's, I do have Code of Princess on Wii or Switch. Uh, I was gonna say Switch U on <laughs> Switch. Uh, yes, it's the new system coming out. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I want this new attachment for my Switch, the Switch U. <laughs> um. I don't. I guess I. I, I know you've re, you always talked about this game, but I, I don't think I have any desire to get it, probably because of the price. But if it were cheap, I would definitely check it out. Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, the price. If you're looking to get it, I mean, you're probably gonna have to pay around two hundred bucks for it right now. Maybe one one fifty. I haven't looked it up in a while, but it's always been over a hundred. Yeah, yeah. I remember when I had it; it was around a hundred dollars too. But it's a great game if you if you can get your hands on it, emulate it, play it. However, get it on Xbox Live. Uh, it's definitely worth playing. It's my favorite game on the Saturn. Nice. I'll All hand right. it over to you. What's that? I'll hand it over to you. Yeah, so I'm going to do the modern game spotlight, and I think the one thing that we should clarify or define um, in Hunter U, and I didn't even talk about this. Yeah, before. yeah, what's a modern game? Right. I would say modern would be anything last gen or onward, right? So Xbox 360, okay. you call that modern. I would not call that retro. No, I wouldn't either. I even have a hard time calling the GameCube retro because... <laughs> yeah, me too. It, but I, at this point, I think we got to let that go. I think yeah, yeah. PS2 and Xbox is about the cutoff. All right, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, so the game I picked is a game I've talked about um, in real life for a while, and I even mentioned it, I think, in a couple of my videos since I started doing videos again already. Yeah, um, but it, it's It's Zombie Army Trilogy. And I, I guess I, the only reason I like to talk about this game so much is because it's so unknown and unrecognized. I, I don't know anything about it. That Yeah, and it has like a small cult following. So, Does uh, it? Yeah, it's developed by Rebellion. If you don't know Rebellion, they developed, um, I guess their biggest claim to fame would be the Alien vs. Predator game on PC, the original, the one that everybody... Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they developed... Um, uh, what's that called? Dread. There's a Judge Dread game on GameCube. And oh, yeah. I've, I've seen that. They did that? Yeah, they developed that, which is actually not too bad. I have it. Um, Interesting. And then um, what they're most known for nowadays is Sniper Elite, which are excellent games, especially especially co-op. Uh, we, um, we might quip on Sniper Elite here in a little bit, actually. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, so, anyway, Zombie Army Trilogy started out as a DLC pack for, I believe, Sniper Elite 2. I oh, think really? there were, Yeah, there were two of them. In the game, there's three episodes. The first two episodes were downloadable content for Sniper Elite 2. Uh, the third one, they made specifically for the Zombie Army Trilogy game to be released on its own. And all it is, it's really there's really nothing special about it. It is a third-person game. You get three guns. You get to pick between a few guns, but you're always going to have a sniper a uh, mid-range gun, like an assault rifle or a shotgun, um, and a pistol, a handgun of some sort. And you simply start at point A, and you have to get to the end of the level. And at the end, I mean, there's a couple of safe rooms and checkpoints on the way. Right. Um, but you're just fighting these hordes of zombies, and it's just simple, good challenge. Um, it's not easy. It's not too difficult. It finds a good balance. Um, it's just fun, especially on co-op. A uh, buddy of mine and I went through the game. Every Sunday we played a level. And uh, it took us about, I don't know, almost two months to finish it. And uh, 
we just had such a good time. I've never had that much fun on a co-op game ever. And then we went through it again on the hardest difficulty with uh, my buddy and I plus my girlfriend. And um, just so fun. One of the things I think that makes it so memorable for me is that it's a complete and total um, like love letter to 80s horror movies. Oh, that's most, that's cool. Most of the achievements, first of all, the music is almost entirely synth. And, oh, really? Uh, yeah, it's very 80s horror movie music. It's it's very good. Um, but almost all of the achievements are a um, a reference to some sort of 80s horror movie. And um, I should have done this beforehand, but let me see if I can pull up an achievements list. All right. and, uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now, I will say real quick while you're doing that, not having played the game, not writing it off, I'm a little sick of the zombie genre. Yeah, me too. And um, I, I think... <laughs> I think the only reason that this one worked for me is just because it's so um, just different and or not even different. It's just so tongue in cheek and knows exactly what it is. It's not trying to be a big budget game. It's just a, a solid game. It's a little bit cumbersome, a little bit awkward sometimes, um, but it is uh, it is a lot of fun. Yeah, it seems like it seems like the kind of game co-op. It would be the way to go. Oh yeah, it's it's it really takes it up a a, a ton, a lot of notches, we'll call it. Um, all right, okay. So here's a good example. I'm looking at the achievements list. Um, this one's called "Got You, Didn't I, You Little Sucker." That's the name <laughs> of the achievement. That line is from Evil Dead Two. I was gonna say it's from Evil Dead. When he right? cuts his hand off and he shoots it, starts shooting at it with a shotgun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, there's a lot of other ones in here that I probably don't even know. That's cool, though. I like I like that uh, nod. Yeah. Good, bad, I'm the guy with the gun. That's another one. That's from Army okay, of Okay, yeah. Yeah. So you can tell that these people loved 80s horror movies and stuff like that. Just the way the entire game is designed. It is so fun. It's completely linear. It's, I think, 15 levels. Three chapters, five levels each. Um, and at the end, you fight. Uh, I'm a spoiler alert, but at the end, you fight a giant uh, zombie robot Hitler. I mean, it's just a total. <laughs> it takes place in like the World War II type. You know, That's thing, what I assumed, yeah. Which Sniper really does. Um, if you haven't played it, I would say grab a buddy, play through maybe the first episode, and see if you have a good time. It's not going to win an award, but for me, it remains the most fun I've ever had on a co op game. Uh this game is relatively new, right? Um, not really. It came out um, probably five years ago, four years oh, ago. Oh, okay. So it's not that new. No. Um, Interesting, though. No, I've never played it. Yeah. But I know you've been talking about it forever. Oh, yeah. Super good. Super good. Was that a full price game when it came out? Uh, I think it was only like 50 bucks. So a little bit discounted. Yeah. But it has a horde mode, too. Um, I was just saying, also, there's probably some other stuff. Yeah, there's no DLC for it. Um, really? That's surprising. Right. The game itself started out as DLC, so I guess that would be kind of weird. But um, it, uh, it has a horde mode in the campaign. And the campaign's lengthy, and it's fun. Especially if you're getting all the collectibles, which is another whole other thing. Now, uh, uh, sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean oh, to cut right. you off there. Didn't a new one just come out, too? Yeah, we'll talk about it. Okay. <laughs> Um, maybe in the next segment, if you know what I mean. Oh, okay, um, yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, um, but anyway, I, I, I really suggest the game, especially if you're a fan of 80s horror movies and shooters. I think that's really the only way that it works. And if you have somebody to play it with. Uh, well, I will have to check that out then. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good. I mean, I'm not gonna say it's for everybody, but if you, if it, if it clicks with you, it will click. You know, you're right, going right. You will yeah. like it. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Interesting pick there. Yeah. Uh, so next, games I'm playing. Well, let's go ahead and talk about that then. So yeah. Zombie Army Trilogy got a <laughs> it got a sequel, and the sequel came out like two weeks ago, and my buddy and I are playing that. Well, how is it? It's good. It's pretty much the same kind of thing. It's a little bit more advanced, a little more polished. Um, well, they had five years. Yeah, I mean, it's you can tell it's based off a newer engine. Um, it has more customizable stuff in it. 
it's basically like what you'd expect from a sequel. Right, right, yeah. A little, bit, I will a little say, bit better, better everything. Yeah, and I will say the first achievement I got, which kind of solidified, like, okay, this is a fun game. Or this is a game, <laughs> this is a game I'm going to like. Is The name of the first achievement was Groovy, which oh, is another well, game. That, well, there you go, yeah. Um, and the collectible this time around is every hand has these uh, decapitated, well, I guess decapitated is not the word, severed hands that are ro- crawling around, and to get the collectible, <laughs> you just shoot the hand. Interesting. Yeah, so these guys have seen Evil Dead once or twice, that's for sure. Um, but this one's got, like, zombie sharks. It's got, it's more a little <laughs> more off the wall, um, but it's fun. It's it's a good game. We're it's having good, though. At least they didn't deviate, and it's, you know, crap. Yeah. Um, so I've got another game on my list. I've only got two, really, right now. I, I guess we could just alternate and kind of go back and forth. What do you got? All right, well, I'm going to start with the first one. I know I quipped on this when we were talking a couple of weeks ago. That uh, Lonely Mountains Downhill on Xbox Live. Uh, it was on Game Pass. I think it's also on the Switch, though. And I'm assuming... Oh, this, it, this is the trial-type game? Yeah, yeah. So I'm assuming it's on PS4, too. But it's on Switch and Xbox, at least. And, yeah, it's kind of like Trials. Not exactly the same. So this is a cute little indie game. Cute graphics. Mm-hmm. You know, real simple. You're riding a mi- you're riding a mountain bike down a, a bike trail, and your goal is to get to the bottom. And it's kind of like trials, you know. You got to get to checkpoints, and then if you, you know, if you wreck, you start over from the last checkpoint. And there's challenges for each level, like completed without cra- with crashing like under 15 times. What's it but called? It's, just, it's called Lonely Mountains Downhill. There we go. Uh, I was gonna look it up. Yeah, it's it's a it's a real simple game, but you know, I I find myself as I've gotten older, and you know, I have less free time obviously than when I was a teenager. I I almost I almost like go towards playing more of these indie type games that are real simple that I can play for 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. It's hard to find the time to sit down and play like Octopath Traveler, which is hundreds of hours, which yeah. I still which I still haven't played because I don't have any time. I agree with you. Now is this a 3D game? It is 3D. Yeah, it is okay. 3D. It looks 3D. Yeah. I'd almost compare it to like I don't want to say like the the graphic style is almost like I don't even know. Like not Paper Mario, kind of, but almost a little bit. Yeah, it's like a blocky type border. Yeah, you could almost get away. At least the character models are definitely like that squared off paper type look. Yeah, so yeah, it's kind of like in that style. Real yep. simple graphics, but nice, cute, colorful, real simple. One, one, just one I happened to download because I saw it on Game Pass and it looked interesting. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the ones I'm going to go ahead and recommend. Yeah. Huh. I never did play Trials. Uh, that trials is great too. Every I would say all of them. I really want to get the one that's on Switch. Oh, Fusion, Fusion, I think. Yeah, Fusion. Yeah. I'd like. I'd like to get that. Cool. All right. Yeah. If that comes out on Switch or whatever, if it's a got a good sale or good. Yeah, price. I believe it's on the eShop. I don't know how much it is. I'd imagine cheap because I think the game was like seven megabytes. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> it, was, it was something small. Yeah. Cool. But. Yeah, so, all right, so we can go back and give you your next pick here. What do you got? Yeah, so I've been playing this game on Switch. It's kind of a, a, along the lines of an indie game. Um, yeah, I think it would classify as that. The game's called Valfaris. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember you yeah. bought that. Um, I don't know the name of the developer. I know it was published by Merge. Uh, and I know the, but I do know the developers are the same people who developed the game Slain Back from Hell. Or Oh, yeah, yeah. I think that's what it's called. Um uh, and I, I, I almost bought Slain a few times. I heard mixed stuff on it. Um, I, I read some reviews. Didn't didn't seem that good. This one seems to have gotten a little bit better. Um, uh, received a bit better. Um, and all, what it is is you're just a character, and you're on like an alien type. It's got like a hell slash demon slash alien kind of feel to it. Uh, very bloody. Um, it's one of those, I don't know if pixel art's the right word, but almost like the Super Nintendo type look. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. Except it's obviously something that could never even come close to running on a Super Nintendo. It's got, you know, a lot of detail and stuff into it. Oh, but yeah, it, I mean, yeah, it is sure. That, yeah, kind of like a, I don't know if Dead Cells would be a good example. Kind of like that. Interesting. Yeah, um, it is a run-and-gun shooter. It, it is not a Metroidvania. It's not a roguelike. Um, which everything seems to be one of those nowadays. Oh, I know. That seems to be the uh, theme these days. Everything's yeah. a roguelike. Yep. 
Uh, it is uh, it is it, difficult, but it is one of those games where, as you learn enemy patterns, you get better, and you get better to the point where now it, what was hard is not so hard anymore until you learn the new, until you find the new challenge or whatever. Right, right. The next boss battle or the next enemy type. Um, it's not like Dark, so- Dark Souls or anything like that, but it's um, it's a game where you have to learn to be better and you get better and have more fun like, with it. You, like you have to get better or you're not going to yeah. be able to beat it. Yep, uh, and it's very fun and... Uh, it was like twenty five. It has a physical version, and in fact, I think it even has a, a limited edition. Oh, really? Um, it might be from uh, what's that company called? Signature Edition. Signature they made. Edition, yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, definitely recommend it. It's it's like a Contra style game, I guess if you want to call it something. Um, and certainly since the new Contra sucked. Um, yeah, you know, I heard that was terrible. Yeah, that's what I heard too. I didn't. I didn't play it, but I heard it was pretty damn terrible. Yeah. Yeah, play Blazing Chrome instead. That's a better one. I heard that was actually very good. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a shame about Contra. I was hoping that was yeah. going to be good. Yeah, so this is like if uh, Contra 3 was um, mature and had a heavy metal theme. Because this game has like a heavy metal music type oh, of... Really? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. My ally. Yeah, it's pretty, good. It's pretty interesting. My, uh, Valfaris, right? Yeah. I'm yeah, to check Valfaris is the name of the planet that you're on in the game. Oh, okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check that out. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Uh, so, what's your? How many more do you have? Uh, well, I wrote down four, but I'm probably only going to equip on three. Okay, go ahead. Uh, but I, I want to say real quick, I, you know, I thought for sure when you were going to do a uh, modern spotlight, I thought for sure you're going to pick dead cells. I almost did. I, I, yeah, I did. I really thought that's what you were going to pick. Yeah. Uh, all right. So the next one here, interesting pick. No one's probably talking about this game. Fitness boxing for the switch. So I, I did buy this game with the intention to use it to work out. Fitness which, bo- yeah, like which that, okay, I'm thinking Ring Fit Adventure. This is something else. This is yeah, so this is completely different. So it's a boxing game. You box, okay. you do you do jabs, uppercuts, whatever. But it's kind of like a rhythm game, you know, guitar hero, whatever. It's like a rhythm game. So you do everything to the music. So it's really fun and addicting and it's a it's a workout. Like I did ten minutes the first day I got it and it about killed me. But I would definitely say if you're trying to lose weight or whatever, build muscle, this is a great game. Now, I know you said Ring Fit Adventure. I heard that's really good, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, haven't played that. I would say, I will say, the controls for fitness boxing, since, you know, the way you do it is you hold both the Joy-Cons in each hand. Uh, it's not perfect, but that's the nature of motion control, I guess. Mm-hmm. Not going to be perfect, but it's close enough, in my opinion. And the music selection is pretty good, too. It's just instrumental versions of stuff like... Uh, I think it's got like Maroon Five and Carly Rae Jepsen or whatever. Oh, really? It has real songs. Yeah, I, I believe it is all real songs. What's this game called again? Uh, fitness boxing. Fitness boxing. Actually, <laughs> I don't know if it's still hard to find, but when I went to buy it, one Target was the only place I could find it. No GameStop had it. Walmart was sold out. Uh, oh, I've seen this. Yeah, I was gonna say. I'm sure you, if you've been to any store, you've seen the cover. Yeah. Oh, apparently, according to the Wikipedia, it's the sequel to Gold's Gym Cardio Workout on the Wii. <laughs> now, <laughs> well, I've been waiting for a sequel to that game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's got real songs here. Let's see. Uh, Video Killed the Radio Star. Uh-huh. Uh, let's see. Party Rock Anthem, stuff like that. Okay. I mean, it's mostly modern pop songs, but yeah. it's real songs. So it's instrumental versions. But yeah, it's fun. I mean... It makes it makes working out fun. It's more fun than going to the gym. Hmm. It is sold out on Best Buy's website. Is it? Is it still yeah. sold out? Yeah. Uh, it, you know why? It's because the New Year's resolution was for everybody to lose weight. <laughs> so they all went out and bought it in droves. <laughs> it does appear to be uh, a little bit limited as far as what's on eBay also. Really? Yeah. Well, I, know it's, I know it's still pretty expensive, I believe. Yeah, I was going to say the cheapest, I mean, a lot of these are from Japan or one of them's from Israel for some reason, but... Well, the, you certainly could import it. There's yeah, no real English you need to know. It seems the cheapest uh, NTSC copy is $76.31. What? And this is one of those guys that has, like, one picture of the game, but then behind that picture is, like, a stack of, like, six or seven copies of it. Right, right. So he's one of those... 
he probably went to every target in his state. Um, that's interesting. I, I, I got it. Uh, so I bought it. I bought it on New Year's Day, actually, because my New Year's resolution was to work out more. And when I went to buy, I was fully intending to pay full price for it. I was going to pay, I think it, I don't think it was 60. I think it was 49.99, but I was going to pay it. Yeah. Uh, and when the dude rang it up at Target, it rang up for 24.99 new. So, wow. I guess I got a pretty good deal on it then. Yeah, you did. Seemingly. But, but yeah, so that's my <laughs> second pick. Nice. That was a good pick. Uh, what were the other two that you had? Uh, so, Sniper Elite. So I, I'd never played Sniper Elite until recently. Okay. Uh, my buddy actually was the one. I was over at his house and he had downloaded Sniper Elite Four because it's on Game Pass. Okay. And my God, it's one of the most fun games I've ever played. Yeah, co-op. That game is a blast. Oh my God! Like, I thought they were going to be more like stealthy. Like, I don't know. I was picturing like I don't know, Dishonored for some reason. Like something stealth, super stealthy, which I'm not super into. Which it can be, yeah, or you, you can go in there and just blast them. Yep. Uh, but yeah, it's so, super fun. Every Sniper Elite game since the third one, which I guess there's only been three and four, but it's also made by Rebellion, and we've played Zombie Army Trilogy. Right, so right. My friend, uh, my friend and I have played through um, all of them co-op, and Sniper Elite Two is a fine game. It's okay. It's a there's nothing too special about it. The leap from two to three is pretty big. Three is uh, quite a bit better. Oh really? And the, yeah, and the leap from three to four is every bit as big as that. Really? And, um. So if you go from like two to four, it's, it's striking how different they are. Really? All right. I well, I've only ever played four. Okay, then you're you're fine. I wouldn't necessarily say you should go back, but you could play three on Switch. I think that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, you know, I would like to get that actually. Yeah, and it's uh, yeah, four is a lot of fun. Oh, it's, it's a, yeah, we were playing in co-op, and I was like, oh my god. Yeah, How have I not played it, this? It's perfect if you've got, you know, two buddies or two guys, uh, a headset, you know, to talk to each other. And it's, it's a, uh, yeah, highly recommended. Yeah, so uh, I, I don't, I, I'm going to say underrated. I never hear anybody talk oh, about yeah. it. I'm going to say underrated game for sure. Yep. Underrated, se underrated series for sure. Now, you know, they've announced the fifth one. Have they? Have yeah, they? Yeah, they have. Also Sniper Elite VR. Um, oh, Really? Right, that, yeah. that would actually kind of be cool, though. Yeah, it probably would be. I, I don't have any way to play it. No, um, but cool, cool concept. But yeah, so yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you 100. percent All right, yeah. So Sniper Lee, underrated. Uh, so the the last game here that I'll, I'll just clip on real quick because I we might as well. It's already so long anyway. Yeah. Uh, Forza Horizon Four, one of the very very few Xbox One exclusives, which. It's technically not even exclusive because it's on PC too, but okay. For all intents and purposes, it's a Microsoft game. Yeah, yep. Which there aren't many. So, uh, probably the best racing game in the last ten years that I've played. Uh, it's well, not I never played Hello Kitty Island Cruise. Uh, well, that's true. I also didn't play Racing with Ryan, uh, Crayola World, or whatever. <laughs> well, that's just a shame. But. Uh, yeah, so it's not it's not really like Gran Turismo, which I love Gran Turismo. It's not really a simulation type game. I wouldn't say it's necessarily arcadey. It's almost kind of in the middle. Like a Need for Speed or Burnout? Yeah, yeah sort of like Need for Speed. I'd compare it more to that. Or kind of like Burnout, yeah. Uh, so I never play. I'm not huge on the racing games myself, but um, I have heard a lot of people talk about um, the Forza Horizon, specifically those uh, series, that series being very good. I've only played four once again because it's on Game Pass because Game Pass is one of the best things ever. And uh, I have too, but I haven't played it yet. But yeah, I mean, if you like racing games, it's great. The The variety of cars, it's it's crazy how many they have. And there's tons of DLC too if you're into that, if you want to pay for it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm cheap, so I don't. But I mean, just the base content, it's, it's pretty great. Mm -hmm. They really did a, a great job on it. Now, I know the... Um, there's a... There's uh, Forza Motorsport is the like the the parallel series I guess to the Horizon series. Yep, that I believe is a simulation racer, kind of like Gran Turismo. Yeah, I think you're right. Which, but I do like those kinds of games. I mean, I love Gran Turismo too. Yeah, they've like, got their place. But I'd be interested to get the steering wheel to, to oh, play. Yeah. I feel like it would be super super fun with the wheel and pedals. Yeah, it might be. I forgot. I used to have one of those for 64. It's been a long time. Since I, I, I had one. I had one for PS1. Yeah. <laughs> I 
forgot they still made those. I know, isn't it crazy? Because you never see anybody buying them. But, yeah, I just wanted to touch on that real quick. Forza Horizon 4, great racer. Probably my favorite of the last 10 years uh, that I can think of offhand. Mm-hmm. Nice. All right, so I guess moving on from that segment. Yeah. Uh, next is uh, basically the last one. Uh, games we're looking forward to. Now, I don't know how you did this. I, I limited it to just two two games. Um, there's probably more. Um, but games that are coming out relatively soon, at least this year. Yeah, I, I have two that are coming up pretty soon. Yeah, I mean, I could have put Metroid Prime 4 on this list. I could have put, you know, whatever. Right, right. But, yeah, yeah, so I, I tried I'll to go, stick to something with a release date. Yeah. I'll go ahead with my first one. I've already mentioned it in this video, but Doom Eternal. Yeah, uh, I figured that one was coming. Yeah, it comes out March uh, is it the 20th. It's the same day as Animal Crossing. Yeah, yep. So about a month from now. Um, Doom, the original Doom is, I mean, if depending on the day you ask me, could be my favorite game of all time. I mean, I played it as a really? kid, so it, it's so... It's really? so Rained to every game that I play. Um, I do love Doom. Yeah, that I just every time it's on a new console, I've got to play it. Um, I'll beat it from start to finish. Doom one and Doom two, uh, mind you. Um, I've tried to play all the ports I can. To I mean, I've beaten it on Game Boy. Oh, you play? And you played the TI eighty nine version? I played the TI eighty four version, <laughs> um, <laughs> which took up all the free space on my calculator. <laughs> um and it sucked anyway oh, but, i'm sure i'm sure yeah um but doom is so it, it's 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 just been so uh instrumental in my this is gonna sound weird but instrumental in my upbringing yeah, that, it, for, it formulated your taste from when you were young from when you were young exactly i mean when i was uh, less than 10 i don't know how old i was my uncle had it on his computer and i would play it when we went to his house until my dad found out and said no more <laughs> um then years go by, and I buy it on Super Nintendo, and I didn't know that it was a bad version at the time, but obviously now I do. The music's um, good. Yeah, yep. Um, so anyway, yeah, the the 2016, uh, we'll call it reboot, was so much fun. Oh my, it was fantastic. It was really... I, I don't it was even, a surprise. It was a yeah, super hit, I think. It wasn't even what I, I... I don't even know what I expected. I just knew I was excited for it. And um, it did not disappoint. That's another game I've already beaten three times. I beat it on uh, Xbox One twice and Switch once. And um, I would gladly play it again. And uh, I, I just cannot... This next one, the early previews for it have been very positive, And they say the game is just nuts. So I really? cannot... Yeah, all right. I mean, I'm probably getting it. Oh, it's a day. I already have it pre-ordered. I, yeah. I pre-ordered the... Uh, not the collector's edition like the 150 dollar one or whatever that yeah, comes with yeah. the doom helmet but the one just before that and it, it's coming to switch right it is it's coming to switch um after the initial release it supposedly won't be that long of a wait i was gonna say i didn't think it was a launch at launch yeah uh, it's i'm getting, interesting though yeah i'm getting it on xbox one i have an x so it, it i'll get the switch version but if you're really, if you have a choice, I wouldn't say you should get the Switch version initially. I mean, no, you no. want to see this game in as much glory as you can. But it is nice that they're going to give you that option. Yeah, for sure. And, and I'm definitely going to get it on Switch when it comes from down from sixty bucks, assuming that the game was good. Well, well, yeah, assuming which, that it's good, which sounds like it will be. So I'm very, very excited for it, and it's only about a month away. All right, good pick there. Good pick. We're going to alternate here. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so uh, my first pick, everyone knows, Pokemon Fanatic. Had to pick Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Yeah, it's coming I'm really out. about this game. So, total shocker, right? Did not expect them to announce they were remaking this, like, at all. I don't think anybody did, uh, because I'm still waiting on my damn Generation 4 remakes. But, but... Uh, so, Mystery Dungeon, it's a spinoff series. It's kind of like a... It's a dungeon crawler, basically. You yeah. play as a Pokemon. Oh, okay. Uh, and you basically go up floors, and you defeat enemies to get to the end of the dungeon, and uh, you, you level up, and it's like a Pokemon game, except you're a Pokemon. Uh, I played so much of Pokemon uh, Blue Rescue Team on the DS when it came out. Yes, I remember that. Uh, and my neighbor had Red Rescue Team. 
and my I mean we played I played it to death. I mean like much like Doom was influencing you this game. I mean I I was like 10 when it came out. I think it was 2005. Mm-hmm. Uh just a really great game and the fact that it got a a, a remake announcement kind of blew my mind and it's a definite day one. Okay. Uh I think that comes out uh is it is it the first week of March? I gotta look it up. I'm not prepared here. Is that a game? I, it's a dungeon crawler. Um, I don't know if I'd like it or not. Yeah, it's a it's a um. Well, I well I will say I haven't watched anything about the new one other than the the initial they announced it. Uh the DS ones are like a top down view. Okay. I don't know if this is like a top down view. I'm assuming. I'm gonna assume that it is though. Uh, yeah, so, it comes out March 6th. According to Nintendo's website, there's a demo available. Oh, really? Yes. Okay, well... Uh, I just hit the demo available button, and apparently now it's downloading on my Switch somewhere. So, Well, there you go. Oh, it also says right here uh, on the Wikipedia, progress in the demo can be transferred to the full game. Oh, how about that? All right, oh, yeah, I'll give this a shot. That's actually very cool. Yeah. Now, is this a full price game? Let's see. Uh, I'm going to assume yes. It is, yes, it is. It's all, it's developed by Spike Chunsoft. <laughs> Who? <laughs> <laughs> they do Dragon Quest. Oh, okay. Dragon Quest, they did um they do um Dungan Ropa, if anybody's played that. I've heard of it. Yeah, they do uh some other stuff, but they're mainly known for Dragon Dragon Quest. All right. If you want my Best Buy discount on this one, you know how to reach me. Uh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> uh, first, I need to come up with the money, though. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I'll play that. I, I will. Uh, I'll play that demo. I'll yeah, I, rec- I recommend giving it a shot. I've, I, my, my friends and my girlfriend have been trying to get me into Pokemon. Um, I don't even know which one I have. I, think yeah, I was going to say, I know you were never really into it. Whatever the one with the red case is, that's the one I have. I think that's Sword. Sword, yeah. Yeah. No, and, no. That's shield. Sorry, that's shield. Shield. Okay. You um, have that? I do. Yeah, and I don't know. I, it's just not my thing. I mean, just, I I'm in the what do they call the wide open area where you can fight? Yeah, the wild area. Yeah. Um, I, it's a lot of grinding, and it's just not. I'm just not having that much fun. And I get it. Look, somebody who grew up with Pokemon, I'm sure it's a riot. Oh, um, it is. Yeah. And definitely. I bet somebody who sees me playing Doom on a switch for the 30th time is going to become a <laughs> dummy um but i mean that's a game that i grew up I, with so I, I guess I, I do gotta say uh, i mean it's relevant because i'm technically still playing the new pokemons um i don't know if i've ever been more excited for a game unless you announce the new fallout game tomorrow that's not fallout 76 then then because you then, that pokemon game you mean yeah so, i mean i've wanted a 3d Pokemon game like you know like the handheld ones like regular RPG on system in 3D glory and we finally get it after I mean 20 years right 20 I mean 20 years I mean yeah you had Coliseum on the GameCube which is one of my favorite games ever but it's nothing like the regular <laughs> games it's totally and that's the only one I've put any actual amount of time into I do love that game yeah I do love that game that'll that'll probably get spotlighted at some point Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, when it got announced, I, I I was like, I mean, I knew it was coming. Everyone knew it was coming because I know Game Freak said like we're done with the 3DS. So and obviously they're going to keep making Pokemon games. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm not going to say the game is not without flaws either because it certainly is. Yeah. But overall, I would say it delivered to my expectations. It was pretty good. That's good. But. All right, so moving on, I'll give you your next pick here. What, what else you got? Um, yes, okay, one more. Uh, Axiom Verge 2. Oh, I, I had a feeling this one was coming too. Yeah, so uh, that got announced late last year, I think, and um, super exciting. The now, first... I have not played Axiom Verge. Okay. But I know it's supposed well, to be fantastic. Yeah, I won't spoil anything for you. I, w- I think this. I bought, I bought two games at the same time. I bought Axiom Verge and I bought Dead Cells. I okay. Played, I played Dead Cells and thought, okay, so I've got to restart every time I die. I don't like this. So I put it away. 
Uh, and then I started playing Axiom Verge, and I only played a couple hours of it, maybe throughout the course of a couple of days, and ended up shelving it. Now, part of the reason I ended up shelving it is because I ended up falling in love with Dead Cells, um, and I just never bothered going back to it. Eventually, I said, you know what, I, I'm going to give this game another shot. It was good, I just, you know, other things came up that I wanted to play. And it was outstanding. I mean, the fact that it was made by a single person... Um, yeah, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, and he drew all these... And it comes with a nice collector's edition on Switch for no additional cost. It's like the standard version is basically... Right, collection. right. Um, it is true, or through and through a Metroid game. Um, and it was just... It was awesome. And and then the whole Wii U thing happened where it came out on that, and now you've got the sequel coming out this year that's a... I, from what I understand, it's not going to be a sequel... Uh, more like just not like a continuation of the story, more like a new story. Right, right, right. Which is fine. I mean, it, um, but if you like Metroid and you like games where you're isolated, you're 100 percent alone, and the game's not going to hand feed you where you got to go and what you have to do, you will really enjoy that game. If you don't like that, then avoid it. Just don't even bother. Yeah, and uh, it's very interesting that uh, Axiom Verge came out for the Wii U. Yeah. That's what a shocker. Physically, anyway. I mean, it's yeah. been out digitally for a long time. Well, well, yeah, but I, I mean, a physical Wii U game in 2019. Was that last year? Yeah, it was. It, it, was, it was last year, yeah. 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 Um, they say that's the best way to play it. That's what the, I, think I was going to say, because I think it was developed for that, right? Well, I think... Um, I don't know if it was developed specifically for that or not, but... Um, the developer, I think, did say that that is the premiere version of it. Interesting. Um, I could be wrong there. I might be confusing it with something else, but I, I think I, I read that somewhere. Interesting. So if I do play it again, that's probably the version I'll play. But um, the sequel comes out. I don't, I, there's no firm release date. It's just supposed to be this year. Um, it'll be no questions asked a day one purchase. I, I, ass I assumed, yeah. Not even thinking twice about it. Yeah, interesting. I'd like to try the first one at some mm -hmm. point. All right. How many more uh, have you got? I got one. I got one more here. Right. So, uh, this game has had, uh, from what I have seen, no no marketing. The only reason I found out about it, funny enough, was from one of the, you know, if you go into GameStop, they have the little upcoming piece of paper. Yeah. I only knew about it because it was on that, and I was like, really? It's getting a third installment? Uh, and that's Watch Dogs. Oh, yeah. Uh, Watch Dogs Legion. So, this game was actually supposed to come out in a couple weeks, but it got delayed. And they haven't put a date yet. Mm -hmm. um, kind of shocking it's getting a third one. Because to be honest, I didn't think it'd get a second one. Well, two, I think, was kind of not very well liked, right? Uh, I I don't know how it went over. I don't think the critical reception was great. I did enjoy it. Um, mm -hmm. I will say I didn't like it as much as the first one. And I'm, I'm going to get some flack on this one. I would say that the first Watch Dogs is easily... Just as good as Grand Theft Auto Five, if nope. not better. Wow! I'm gonna make the claim. I loved that game so much, and I I don't even know why. Maybe it's, I mean, I mean the plot was kind of cheesy, but it was kind of cool. But I don't know the hacking aspect of it. They I think they did it really well, and I gotta say, I gotta hand it to Ubisoft. They they put out some pretty quality titles in the last like ten years. Okay. I mean, the Far Cry series, Far Cry 3, 4, 5, amazing. We're not going to mention Assassin's Creed Unity, of course. Uh, no, I hate Assassin's Creed. <laughs> I, know, I, I know everyone loves Assassin's Creed. Well, that one specifically launched with a plethora of glitchy... Oh, oh, di oh, did it? Yeah, and I think there was another game, too. Was it The Division? Oh, Division? Yeah, I think. Maybe it was the second Division? I, I'm not sure. I was, yeah, I, was, I was working for GameStop when the second one came out. <laughs> the one that, that was... just dropped to $5, that one? I, I, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I think that I played Watch Dogs, actually, the first one. I think I still have it. Do I? I sure do. Um, actually, well, I know I have it on Wii U, but I have it on Xbox One also. That was one of the very first games to come out for the next gen consoles. Uh, yeah, it was it was I don't think it was too far after the launch. Yeah, because it's also on 360 and that's probably, That's actually how I that's actually how I played it. I was going to say that's probably why it's on Wii U. I played. You know what I mean? You know, I would imagine I don't have the Wii U version. I want to get it cuz I want to play it. I'd imagine the Wii U version's probably the definitive version. 
Because I would imagine the map and stuff is on the gamepad. You would think. Yeah. So, I, know, I know it was delayed. It came out late. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. But, um, and I've no, never played it either. Great game. Can't believe it's getting the third one. So uh, that's I'm. Uh, it's probably going to be a day one. Huh. Interesting. Um, I don't have the same interest in it. Um, but um, it's definitely not for everybody. No. Yeah, I know you do enjoy those types of games, and um, so not surprised. But um, yeah, and I don't think that's coming out on Switch. Uh, I wouldn't imagine. Although that would be cool. Yeah, that one might be too big. Yeah, yeah, you know um, I mean? yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if that one's getting a release. But they got Witcher on the Switch. That's true. And that that game had to be huge. Yeah, that's true. So, who knows? I mean, who knows? Yeah, it's on the Stadia. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <Well. laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Play it on there. Yeah, I, I probably won't. <laughs> um. Great. Well, I mean, that list, I think, for the both of us could be much longer, but keeping it... Oh, certainly. Certainly. Yeah. And I think as those games come out, and we'll transfer it to the games we're playing recently, we can kind of give updated feedback on the games that we were excited for, so... Right, definitely. Whenever, well, I mean, whatever the next episode is after the game comes out, we'll definitely do a segment. Yeah. So, that pretty much wraps it up. There's one more, uh, you know, we're trying to talk about a way to send off the episode every time we record one. Um, and it's just going to be something simple, and I thought uh, it would be a random piece of trivia, video game related. Um, Hunter, you had one. I do. Um, so it's fitting that you uh, that you do this one, and then we'll uh, we'll send it out. All right. So little known fact, and this is for all you Sega fans: uh, Wild Woody on the Sega CD, terrible game, horrible game. No one would ever think anything about it. I would say in the top. 10 worst named games of all time. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. Oh, it's horrible. Uh, it's just terrible. And the, and the, the character is so over the top. It the game's I mean, the game is horrible. It's He's a pencil. It's, he's a pencil. Yeah, he's Wild yeah, Woody. Yeah. But so that soundtrack was actually done by Ron Thal, otherwise known as Bumblefoot. So if you don't know who that is, he was the guitar player for Guns N' Roses on Chinese Democracy. He did stuff for them. And he's had a very successful solo career. It's just like kind of like in the vein of like Steve Vai or stuff, like guitar virtuoso kind of thing. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, that was his first uh, like real gig. I do believe he did that before he ever recorded an album. What a way to start it, isn't know? it? Isn't it? Isn't that random as all hell? <laughs> like who would who would think, right? Yeah, that is bizarre. Um, it's kind of like that. Uh... The whole, I mean, it's a little bit different, but the whole Michael Jackson doing the music for Sonic 3. Thing. Oh, yeah, 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 isn't that crazy? Yeah, <laughs> if that's even true, I don't know. Uh, I think they did finally reveal that that was true. Oh, I wow. Think, I think they found out, or something, I think they found out that was true. I might be wrong, though. Damn. How about that? Uh, if it is, though, that's crazy. Yeah. No, that, that, that's the kind of trivia that you don't, that, that most people don't know, right? I mean, if you say... Hey, do you know Mario was originally called Jumpman? That yeah, fucking everybody knows that. <laughs> this is the kind of these are the hard hitting trivia facts. Um, yeah, yeah, I tried to pick something a little out there. Yeah, no, that's a good one. That is a good one. I didn't know that. I had no idea. I wouldn't imagine anybody knows that. <laughs> yeah, probably not. So that is a great way to uh, to wrap up the first episode. We went a little long, an hour twenty, uh, almost twenty five. Um, but not bad. I mean, I think we covered everything we wanted to. And um, Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we uh, elaborated on things plentifully. Yep. Yeah. Didn't seem so, like we rushed. So, uh, again, we're going to try and figure out the cadence, how often we're going to do these, and what the upload date is and all the finite uh, details like that. Uh, but once that's all figured out, then we'll uh, we'll be back for the next, next episode of, uh, oh, God. <laughs> <In free joy. laughs> I, forgot about it. I forgot already um, again though yeah if you have any idea of what that name means um, you can comment maybe like I said well maybe we'll do a contest I'll give you a hint it doesn't have anything to do with exercise that no, much I no it doesn't no. or the amount of exercise Hunter and I both do not do although I do jog infrequently yeah <laughs> 
infrequent is probably a stretch for me. It's probably it's never. It's never. I just don't. I just don't <laughs> talk. So okay, all right. Well, thanks for tuning in, and um, we will uh, catch you guys on the next episode.